one thing about cape town rent prices it's the ghetto one thing about cape town real estate agents they have some liver like audacity hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm bringing you a video that i wish i had seen when i was in first year because it's really 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 hard to find good and affordable student accommodation in Cape Town. This video is best suited for students in the UCT vicinity, so obviously UCT, Boston College, maybe CPUT, AFTER, etc, etc. So I'll first start with general guidelines I think you should follow when looking for student accommodation or an apartment in Cape Town, and then I'll go into specific uh, student accommodation blocks, and then I'll go into specific apartment blocks. So if that's what you're into, then stay tuned. Guideline number one, please make sure that the student accommodation or apartment you pick is very close to UCT or in the UCT vicinity. So that's uh, Rosebank, Rondebosch, Claremont, Obbs, Mowbray, I think, oh, Newlands. Anything other than that might be a bit far for you. Personally, a little bit of a story time. The first apartment I got was in first year, it was shared, it was in Claremont. And even though it was in Claremont, and Claremont is basically in UC vicinity, it was still a bit far for me because I still had to walk 10 minutes before I even got to the Jamie stop. And then the Jamie ride is like a good 10 to 15 minutes on a good day because all that traffic child. Please make sure that you pick a place that's very close to campus and that'll give you enough time to get to campus on time. Even though we're probably not going to be on campus for a while because Miss Rona. But yeah, just pick a place that's very close to campus or in the surrounding areas. Guideline number two, please make sure that the apartment you pick or the student to come you pick is close to a jammy stop. Okay, a little bit of a warning about Claremont. Claremont is a really nice, okay. I think I keep picking on Claremont, but it's just such a good example of what I'm trying to say. Anyways, Claremont, for instance, is a very nice place. Everything is very convenient. There's Cavendish Mall right there. There's parks, it's beautiful, it's everything. But the jammies, the jammies. Ask any UCT students about the Claremont jammies. They're always full, you'll always stand. There's always a huge line to get into them. So if you're not into that, then I would stay away from picking Claremont like as a place to live because it is a lot. Like it is a lot. Those lines on a hot day, you're really standing in line to get into a Claremont jammy. Guys, no. <laughs> no. So yeah, just to summarize, pick a place that is close to a jammy stop if you know that you'll be relying on jammies to get to campus since you can't walk or it's too far to walk or whatever the case might be. Guideline number three, please make sure the place you pick has Wi-Fi. I should have taken my own advice because my apartment doesn't have Wi-Fi, but I'm lucky that our mom has a router she doesn't use, so I'll be fine. But don't be like me. Please pick a place that has a Wi-Fi for your own convenience. For now, it's fine because we're not at school, but then when we are at school and chances are, it'll, okay, not even chances are, it'll 100% be online school first semester so you'll want to have that good good wi-fi because obviously you don't want to be buying data every other day or every other second day i use a lot of data so yeah guys please pick a place that does have wi-fi because if you don't you'll regret it like you will actually regret it okay so guideline number four most students of comms include everything you're in so it's fully furnished the water's included literacy is included but some students accommodations don't at first year level i would really really recommend that you go for students to come that does include everything in your rent because it becomes a lot to handle the last thing you want to be worried about is utilities so for me in my first apartment like i previously mentioned uh some of the utilities weren't included and the last thing i wanted to be worried about was electricity water and whatnot 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 so I really recommend that you go for a place that does include all of that in your rent. However, if you are a little bit older like me, so at postgrad level, even second or third year, you can go for a place that doesn't because you really are aware of how university works, the workload, blah, blah, blah. I recommend that if you are at first year level or if you don't want to stress about all of that, just get a place that includes everything in your rent so you pay a once off. Okay. Guideline number five, laundry room laundry room please make sure you pick a student to come or an apartment with the communal laundry room and if not that then a washer and dryer in the unit because unless you have money to take your stuff to a laundromat like twice a month three times a month you'll see flames you will see flames my apartment block has a laundry room on every floor and i don't know why i assumed it was free but when i got to my place i realized it's not free huh? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it is what it is, but don't be like me, guys. Get your money's worth and find a place that does accommodate your laundry tasks because 
yeah, can't be taking out clothes to the laundromat all the time. Like all the time, no. Guideline in number six is a safety. Guys, I don't know if you know, but Cape Town isn't the girl she's made out to be. You guys always see the beautiful pictures of Camp Spain and whatnot, but the truth is around UC vicinity is not always safe. So please define a place that does accommodate for your safety. Uh, preferably boom gate access or biometric fingerprint access to be fully, fully, fully safe. So yeah, please define a place that does accommodate for your safety. So now, why did I do that with my head? Like, why was this necessary? Anyway, so now I'm gonna go into some certain accommodations that you can consider. Obviously, I can't tell you everything about the specific rules and how pedantic each building is about their rules, but I can tell you about the location so you can wrap your options and decide. First on my list is Roscommon House in Claremont. It is a new building, so that's good. The location is very inconvenient, but convenient at the same time, I'll explain. It's inconvenient because it's on main road, so there's always gonna be noise. So taxis hooting, cars hooting, it's always busy outside there. So that's why it's inconvenient for me. It's convenient because it's right opposite the mall. You have everything you need, but, but you have to use the Claremont Jammy to get to school and you guys already know how I feel about Claremont Jammies. I told you guys that personally, personally, I wouldn't do that thing of living in Claremont just because of that jammy, but it's not a bad place in first year. Yeah, if you want to try it out, it's a good option. I, I rate Roscommon. Number two on my list is South Point, also in Claremont. It's actually a few blocks away from Roscommon. Okay, South Point is pretty decent. My only problem with it is the location on my standards it's very far from the jammy stop for me very far means if i have to walk more than 10 minutes it's just far so yeah south point is a bit far from the jammy stop and you walk through an area that's not always safe during the day you'll definitely be fine but at night not so sure i know that uct did add uh, south point to the jammy loop so the jammies do go there but only after 6 p.m so anytime before that you'll have to walk to the jammy stop and as far not safe it's busy i just yeah south point's location is really the only reason why i wouldn't rate it and along with being pretty much far from the jammy stop it's also far from uct and the happenings of uct so most of the races are in one area in rosebank um so all the first tier races to be specific are in one place at lower campus and then you get you at south point day over there over there so yeah uh it's a bit far from everything but it's not that bad if you really have no other option south point is not a bad choice at all i don't know if that sounded shady but yeah south point is not a bad choice location is just my only issue if you don't like walking like me don't pick south points zonia next on my list is go green students accommodation in newland it's quite close to the dean street stop maybe about a five to six minute walk to the jammy stop but the jammy stop closest to it is the claremont jammy it stops on dean street you guys already know how I feel about the Claremont Jammy. I just would not do that thing to myself of relying on the Claremont Jammy to get to school every day. And it's a bit too far to walk from the actual accommodation. So yeah, I wouldn't really choose Go Green either unless I really had to. But it's not that bad. It's a Jammy stop right there. It just so happens to be the path the Claremont Jammy goes on. So... Ra -ta -ta -ta. I'm in the ghetto. Ra -ta -ta -ta. So next on my list is Fountain Rare. Since we got honest with you guys, I do break this one the best in the whole list and I'll tell you why. The location is very, very convenient. There's a pick and pay right there, Checkers, Woolworths, there's uh, Clicks, there's Steers, KFC, McDonald's, the gym right on top. Like, there's everything. Everything you might need. Everything. Also newly built, so the units have modern finishes. My only semi-issue with it is that there's no specific jammy stop or fountain res. You have to walk to lower campus whether you like it or not. It's about a 10 to 12 minute walk, so it's not that far. It's not really, it's not like super, super inconvenient. I just don't like walking, as you guys have gathered by now. I hate walking. I'm very biased because I will never choose walking. Like, I will never. So if you don't mind walking, fountain res might be perfect for you. But if you are like me and you just hate walking, then I don't know. The walk isn't that far though. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. It's not that far at all. It's about 10 minutes, like 12 minutes if you're strolling, if you're walking quite slow. So it's not that bad. And I think Fountain Race would be the best for middle campus students. So that's law students because you could walk could you walk to middle campus you could you could get to middle campus in like 12 minutes so you don't even need to go to low campus then get on the jam you can just walk straight to campus but the only thing is that it's not always safe because it's on main road main road is just this is an established fact main road is not always safe like 
no keep exploring your options and weigh up pros cons and see what you like next on my list is a campus key there are two campus keys in UCT vicinity one in Rosebank and one in OBS and I'll keep it a buck with you guys let me keep it a hundred with you guys I've only ever heard subjectively bad things about campus key it's always noisy always rowdy always chaotic and I cannot stand chaos that's why I'm saying subjectively bad though because if you do like chaos and noise and parties and all that then campus key might be good for you you know what I mean but for me personally I like my living space to be quiet to be serene and campus key just has chaotic energy all over it and that's what I've heard from people who live there and people who've been there I personally wouldn't live at campus key so if you're quiet like me I'm not quiet let me no I'm lying if you like quiet spaces like me then I wouldn't go to campus key because chaotic energy all over additionally you can go live in a digs a digs is a shared house by students you usually pay for your room and in the communal areas like the kitchen bathrooms living rooms etc are shared my only issue with the digs is that there's a lot of people in your intimate space digs can range from like three to like 11 or 12 people i just don't like people in my space like that but it's kind of like res but also i don't like res so <laughs> yeah so you can go check out a digs there are digs everywhere you can go check out digsconnect.com not sponsored if you're interested in that and yeah so now let me get into all the apartment blocks you can consider if you're looking for something more mature and not completely studenty and resy is that a word it's not really a word resy the thing about cape town apartments is that you can never win First of all, they are expensive. So if you do find something that's decently priced, chances are it's not furnished or some utilities are not included. <sighs> it's a lot. It's a lot. So I feel like you just need to kind of wrap your options and see what means more to you. So it's like, does having all the utilities and the rent matter more to you or does the apartment being furnished matter more to you? You know what I mean? But anyways, some apartment blocks you can consider is Nursery Square. It's right by Lower Campus. And then Bankside Studios. It's right opposite Lower Campus. But if you're looking for something a bit more mature, a bit more bougie, a bit more private, there's your Ops Junction, your Ops Court, your Rondebosch Oaks, the Rondebosch, the Paragon, uh, the Winchester, um... Baxter Seeds and just a warning, some of the places I just mentioned are very pricey. When I say pricey, I'm talking minimum 7.5 thousand for rent up to like 11, 12 thousand. And something about that just doesn't seem like it doesn't sit right with me. It's just because most of these apartments are very small and it's just like, why am I paying that much for this like small thing? Why? Why? But it is what it is and yeah. So as an end note, I just want to say that Cape Town rent is very expensive, like as fuck. So guys, please do pick a place that matches all your desires and that ticks most, if not all of your boxes, because these agents will really make you pay like 9,000 Rand for an apartment that looks like a jail cell and a pot they mixed together and this pot just mixed together. Anyway, child, that is it from me. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like and a comment. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you stay up to date with all my uploads. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.